Hello everyone. My name is Gajendra Das Sharma and you are watching Englit and in this video we are going to explain some of the most important questions on Thomas Hardy and his works. This video is primarily helpful for upcoming examinations of UPTGT, PGT and NTA NET and other university examinations. In this video you will have comprehension explanation of those MCQs besides the important and most important facts on Thomas Hardy and his works. So let us start the video. The very first question is when Thomas Hardy died in January 1928 his heart was buried in Stinsford with his wife Emma. On January 16 1928 where were his ashes buried? Was it Poets Corner Westminster Abbey or it was Dorset or it was Stinsford or with his second wife Florence? The correct answer is it was in poets corner westminster abbey so his ashes were buried in westminster abbey poets corner dorset was the place where he was born it was near dorchester at higher bokhampton so he was born in 1840 he was born in 1840 near dorchester dorset at higher bokhampton so the place of his birth is dorset he was the son of a stone mason stone mason a builder he descended from nelson's captain hardy descended from nelson's captain hardy and his father was a builder a stone mason why he became poet or a novelist because his mother influenced him to read many books she created his interest in books however in the starting of his days he attended school in dorchester at the age of 16 he was articled to john hicks an architect and at the age of 22 he went to london and worked to for the architect arthur bloomfield and as such he became an architect so he started his career as an architect then he became a novelist and lastly he sought his career in poetry he returned his home in 1867 and he continued his work as an architect however it came to his mind to write something so in 1867 he wrote his first novel the poor man and the lady however this novel was never published even the manuscript was lost In the meantime let me tell you that the online learning platform Unacademy is announcing its multiple batches for NTA UGC NET they are starting from 7th of this January these classes will help you crack your NTA UGC NET examination and they will also boost your preparation and build your concepts moreover Unacademy is also launching the most competitive gamified NTA UGC NET battle combat here you can discover the features of an academic combat like extensive combats that cover every single subject real time leaderboard after every question to keep learners going questions curated by an academy's best nta ugc net educators besides personalized scoring and rating to help you constantly measure your progress and detailed videos solutions after every contest so that you get it right the next time so you can enroll yourself through the link that is given in the description box below so get your subscription today and you can use my code englit e n g l i t to get 10% off as well in 1868 he was sent to st juliet cornwall and here he met emma gifford emma gifford was his first wife he gave up architecture in 1874 and then he became full fledged or full time novelist the marriage did not succeed emma died in 1912 and in 1914 he remarried florence dagel in 1885 he moved to maxgate maxgate was the name of his house it was also near dorset maxgate is now owned by the national trust after the death of thomas hardy maxgate was owned by the national trust it is a conservation organization in england hardy remained there for 40 years maxgate the house was built according to his own design since he was an architect so he designed his own house and he named it maxgate this important fact is asked many times in examinations what was the name of his house it was maxgate and who designed it 
It was Hardy himself who designed it. In 1928, he died, as is clear in the question itself, and he died of this is the important thing: pleurisy. Pleurisy is an inflammation of the cavity surrounding the lungs, and it has dry cough and pain in the affected side. So basically, it was a lung disease. pleurisy which caused him to die so this fact is also important he died of what so he died of pleurisy when thomas hardy died the executor of his estate burned most of his letters and books notebooks next question which of the following characters is described as in emotion she was all the while an epicure and commonly it is also called an epicure in emotion so which character is called an epicure in emotion was it sue brighthead tess ostasia boy or bathsheba everdeen the correct answer is it was ostasia boy who is referred to as an epicure in emotion hardy describes the Ostasia in his own words as as far as social ethics were concerned Ostasia approached the savage state though in emotion she was all the while an epicure she had advanced to the secret recesses of sensuousness and yet had hardly crossed the threshold of conventionality so ostasia is among the very mysterious kind of characters of hardy she was the product of egan hath which she despised she hated that place she always wanted to get rid of that place she always wanted to to lead a luxurious life in the fancy city like london and paris so when she got a chance to move to some fancy place like paris she married climb your bright so she married climb your bright not because she fell in love with him but because she wanted to lead this luxurious life she wanted to fulfill her desires which she had always cherished she always listened to the voice of his flesh body and then epicure as we see that epicure is the philosophy of carpe diem those who are indulged in merry making or those who want to remain indulged in merry making for them world is a luxurious place and then the task or the purpose of a human being is to live merry eat party drink this kind of life of merry making drink and and party it always influenced or attracted ostasia boy so she was a kind of sensuous lady and she had strong desires the impetuous desires by her instinct she could not remain in limits she wanted to explore the world she wanted to enjoy herself to the fullest ostasia boy was the capricious protagonist of return of the native she is one of the most memorable characters of fiction ever written sue brighthead sue brighthead featured in jude the obscure she was just the opposite of ostasia boy ostasia boy always wanted to explore her sexuality to enjoy to exploit her sensuousness while on the other hand on the contrary sue brighthead the most striking feature of her character was her sexlessness she believed in marriages but without sex union so her belief was in platonic affection believed in platonic affection platonic love the love of the soul not of the body so in that way sue brighthead was just contrary to ostasia boy so in that sense hardy created an image of platonic love he made it possible that the spiritual marriage is also possible and this was also propagated later on by gb shaw himself so the physical marriage versus the marriage of soul the spiritual marriage so in this jude the obscure this concept has been projected tess as you know she is the eponymous character of tess of the durverville hardy names her a pure woman she is also called the standard woman the most unfortunate of hardy's characters female characters though she possesses the purity of the spirit she has a strong morals of the mind as well as of the heart the critic henry charles stephen says about her she is moral as any prude her behavior her thoughts her desires on all perilous occasions with alec de arverville early and late with claire with her other admirers are unimpeachable considered from the most critical code and point of view Bathsheba Everdeen was featured in 
far from madding crowd she is the distressing picture of feminine folly so the adage frailty thy name is woman clearly applies to this bathsheba everdeen she is that kind of average lady who commits many mistakes in spite of good heredity education and upbringing so she is an striking example of woman's frailty in spite of her strength as a character as a manager of her farm as a corn dealer as the master of her farm servants the critic charles duffin remarks about her there is nothing subtle or wonderful in bathsheba's nature she is more commonplace than any of the four women tess sue alfred hon and ostasia bathsheba is prose and pedestrian at that so the phrase bathsheba is prose and pedestrian at that is very important from the examination point of view next question how many acts is the dynasties written in 5 acts 10 acts 14 acts or 19 acts the correct answer is it is written in 19 acts the verse drama the dynasties is subtitled as an epic drama of the war with napoleon in three parts 19 acts and 130 scenes so this is the subtitle the dynasties an epic drama of the war with napoleon in three parts 19 acts and 130 scenes so there are three parts 19 acts and 130 scenes this is clear from the subtitle itself and it is based on the napoleon war the three parts were published in 1904 1906 and 1908 so these three parts were published respectively in 1904 1906 1908 it is an extraordinary mixture of prose and poetry epic and drama narrative theatrical and cinematic technique so you can find easily that there is mix of prose and poetry epical and dramatic elements narrative theatrical and cinematic techniques it is a complete package of everything the drama is based on the imminent will that presides over the entire drama it presides over the entire drama what is imminent will it is the spirit a blind chance a spirit of blind chance in human affairs this imminent will is also epitomized in most of the hardy's dramas novels so the human characters are merely puppets in the hand of eminent will whatever they do they are quite helpless before the overpowering nature of the destiny the fate and then they cannot do anything at all in his drama and in his novels the destiny plays the character it is not the characters who play the destiny who dominate their destiny it is the destiny that dominates all the characters in his novels and drama so imminent will is also epitomized and presides over in this drama as well the first part deals with the figure of napoleon and it concerns the events of war with england it also includes french invasion plans of 1805 french invasion so in the first part of this verse drama the napoleon figure is elucidated or described the character napoleon is described and it concerns his war with england and it also has french invasion of 18 of 1805 second part concerns prussian defeat at jena and his meeting with alexander at tilsit and his marriage to mary louis part third concerns deals with the russian campaign of 1812 napoleon's abdication and his eventual death at waterloo defeat at waterloo so in these three parts of this verse drama the epical verse drama his complete life and his exploits have been detailed described beautifully by thomas hardy next question the phrase eminent will occurred in which of hardy's poems so the phrase eminent will did not occur in any of the novels rather it occurred in his poem which was that the convergence of the twin in tenebris after a journey winter words and the correct answer is it occurred in the convergence of the twin the term was used in this poem the eminent will so it is the recurring theme in thomas hardy the theme of man's subjection to the impl- implacable 
an insentient imminent will this imminent will that moves and urges everything so this imminent will epitomizes itself in almost all his novels and the words drama that has been discussed the subtitle of this poem is lines on the loss of the titanic so the poem was composed on titanic the sinking of titanic and here in this sixth stanza he is mentioning this imminent will the lines runs like well while was fashioning this creature of cleaving wing the imminent will that stirs and urges everything it was in the sixth stanza titanic which was fortified from all the harms possible it was supposed to be unsinkable but fate had something else in his store the unsinkable ship broke into pieces and and resulted in the loss of thousands of lives so the destiny played its major role and here he mentions this phrase eminent will and it characterizes the life or dominates the life of majority of his characters they are helpless before this will this fate destiny they are merely puppets however hard they try but they are helpless in the end and this phrase also reflects the philosophy of hardy hardy is supposed to be pessimist however he defends the bleak vision of suffering and injustice as hardy is labeled to be a pessimist but in this poem in tenebris he seems to be defending the bleak vision bleak vision of suffering and injustice in the second line of the poem if way to be better if way to the better there be it exacts a full look at the worst so he says if way to the better there be it exacts a full look at the worst so he seems to be saying that if there is a way to the better if there is at all some way some direction to the better so it requires exacts means it requires or it demands or it calls for a full look at the worst until unless you see the things at their worst you cannot make it better on the basis of your experience at the worst you can make the things better or best so this binary opposition will let you help in some or other way in this way his belief in evolutionary meliorism so he believes in evolutionary meliorism he is not at all complete or utter pessimist he is a meliorist he feels that the worst can be made better if we try to do it if we try some efforts the worst or the pessimistic approach can be made optimistic so he is not thorough optimist and utter pessimist he is a meliorist and he believes in evolutionary meliorism this kind of question can be asked in the examination which philosophy thomas hardy believes in so he believes in evolutionary meliorism so in this poem this important lines which tell his philosophy of life they occur after a journey and the going the going and the voice they are some of his important important poems that were published in poems of 1912 and 13 this was his important collection and these poems are concentratedly personal poems his most memorable works are the going after a journey and the voice so he wrote those he composed those poems in the memory of emma his first wife so his life with emma and his emotions after her death they have been sketched in these poems winter words was published posthumously in 1928 after he was no more this poem was published next question which of the following novels of thomas hardy is a novel of ingenuity is it a laodicean the woodlanders a group of noble dames or the queen of cornwall the correct answer is it is laodicean actually hardy has categorized his novels in three categories novels of character and environment second is romances and fantasies and the third is novel of ingenuity what are the novels of ingenuity he has himself described them as these novels show not a infrequent disregard of the probable in the chain of events and depend for their interest mainly on the incidents themselves so what he has experimented in these novels which he termed as novels of ingenuity like desperate remedies the hand of ethelbreda and laodiceans so he has disregarded the probability actually when we read some kind of story so there is an element of probability 
we assume that after this scene after this event this thing might take place so this is our expectations from the line of the plot but belying this fact the events or the incidents in the novels in these novels particularly they happen according to the situation not in a linear or in an expected way so he has experimented with the form he has disregarded this linear equation or linear happenings linear serialization of the plot the series of incidents any incident can happen according to the situation so there is no chronologically sequencing in the novels that's why they are called novels of ingenuity ingenuity means that there is an experimentation in these novels under the category of novels of character and environment he has included under the greenwood tree far from madding crowd return of the native the mayor of casterbridge the woodlanders so woodlanders fall in this first category the novels of characters and environment the wessex tales tales of the durvervilles life's little ironies jude the obscure in the second category romances and fantasies the novels like a pair of blue eyes the trumpet major two on a tower a group of noble dames the well beloved they were included so the group of novel dames is collection of short story it is not a novel or a drama it is merely a collection of short story and it is also included in romances and fantasies the queen of cornwall is not novel or a short story it is another verse drama so hardy wrote two verse dramas one is the dynast and the second is the queen of cornwall it was published in 1923 so it is verse drama or poetic drama it is also known as the famous tragedy of the queen of cornwall woodlanders is basically known for two important characters giles winterborn and marty fort so these two characters are important in the in this novel the woodlanders next question which of the following thomas hardy's novels reveals a study of man's helplessness before a malignancy of the powerful fate was it the hand of ethelbreda or the trumpet major or the return of the native or a laudo scene the correct answer is it is the return of the native so in return of the native like in many other novels of thomas hardy there is the battle of human beings against the malignancy of powerful fate the eminent will these characters they try their utmost to defeat the destiny or to mold the destiny according to their choice but they feel helpless the character climb your bright in this novel tried his utmost to lead a life according to his own choices he was a well off diamond dealer in paris but he returned to his village and he wanted to establish himself as a teacher he wanted to serve the people of his neighborhood but before he could materialize his dream his eyesight was lost and then he ended his life in egan heath as a furze cutter even in this process when he failed to take ostache white to paris to realize her ambitions and her sensuousness he was left by her even and in this struggle his mother also died so whatever he did was fell short before the powerful and the malignant destiny so is the case with ostache why even she tried to lead the life of her wishes she wanted to realize her instincts her sensuousness her boldness and uh, for that purpose she eloped with the wild eve demon but there she could not realize her ambition and ultimately she ended her life by drowning and such was the case with wild eve even so the major characters they suffered they struggled throughout the novel and then they they remained quite helpless before the malignant the powerful fate so this theme is characterized in this novel the return of the native it was published in 1878 and is one of the greatest of tragedies the scene is pictureized in or setting is egan heath so egan heath is itself a character in this novel it plays a dominant role in the lives of the characters the novel starts with the celebration of guy fox night this is the important fact many times the question is asked as to where or at what event the novel starts so the novel starts with this event the celebration of guy fox night and the setting of the novel is egan heath which is also one of the important characters 
who overshadows the lives of major characters of the novel the hand of ethelbreta and laodicean as i told you in the previous question they are the novels of ingenuity along with the desperate remedies the hand of ethelbreta was published in 1876 and it was suggested by thomas hardy in the preface of the novel that it, it is somewhat frivolous narrative so about which of the following novels the statement it is somewhat frivolous narrative is reused so it is used for the hand of ethelbreta by thomas hardy himself in its preface ethelbreta was the daughter of the daughter of a butler chikerel the novel trumpet major was published in 1880 and it is his only historical novel historical fiction so it is hardy's only historical fiction and the story is set against the backdrop of napoleonic wars the story is set during napoleonic wars and it was that to against the backdrop of preparations for invasion background of preparation of invasion next question thomas hardy's first published work was rather sensational which appeared anonymously in 1871 what was the title under the greenwood tree a pair of blue eyes desperate remedies or far from madding crowd it was the desperate remedies which was published in 1871 anonymously without his name so as is clear by the question itself the plot is influenced by the fashionable themes of the novel of sensation so it is among the novel of sensation though his first novel was the poor man and the lady however it was unpublished that was written in 1867 so that was not published so his first published novel was desperate remedies that was published in 1871 however it was anonymous it was written published anonymously without his name he could not find the publisher for this novel the poor man and the lady when he showed the manuscript of this novel to george meredith george married meredith felt that the manuscript george meredith found that the poor man and the lady would not be accepted favorably because he felt that it was too politically controversial and as such would mad, would damage hardy's image so hardy on the suggestion of george meredith could not publish or did not publish this novel the poor man and the lady and consequently the manuscript also got lost in his recollection life and work he described this novel as socialistic not to say revolutionary yet not argumentatively so so the question can also be asked about which of the following novels of thomas hardy he said it was socialistic not to say revolutionary yet not argumentatively so so this statement was said about the novel the poor and the lady which was unpublished the novel desperate remedies was cited as quasi gothic so it can also be asked which novels of hardy is termed as quasi gothic so it is desperate remedies it was severely criticized by the spectator as the book was called a desperate remedy for an emaciated purse and that the unknown author had prostituted his powers to the purposes of idle prying into the way of wickedness this was a serious or severe criticism which he received under the greenwood tree is subtitled as a rural painting of the dutch school it was published in 1872 so the rural setting was none other than the wessex which is the setting of most of his works he is called regional novelist because of this only because all his works are set in this particular area wessex in one way it is said to be the first in wessex novels series the first in wessex novel series hardy himself says about this novel that it is a fairly true picture at the first hand of the personages ways and customs which were common among such orchestral bodies in the villages it is called the prose idyll and it was called by the critic horace mole 
the title is taken from shakespeare shakespeare's as you like it it is one of the songs of the play under the greenwood tree a pair of blue eyes appeared in tinsley magazine in 17 in 1873 and it was the first of his successful novel far from madding crowd the title is taken from thomas gray elegy elegy written in country churchyard the novel is a tragic comedy and set in wessex so it is also in the series of wessex novels and this reveals the emotional depths of underlying rustic life which underlie rustic life and this novel deals with the destructive effects of sexual obsession after the success of this novel he gave up architecture his profession as an architect and then he married emma gifford next question the novel is a tragedy told for its own sake as a presentation of particulars containing a good deal that was universal and not without a hope that contain catholic aristotelian qualities might be found therein who defined the term novel these words was it thomas hardy charles dickens matthew arnold arthur hugh clow since we are dealing with the questions on thomas hardy so the definition of novel has been given by thomas hardy hardy gave this definition in the postscript of the preface of jude the obscure the edition of 1912 hardy gave the definition of this novel in these words so here in the postscript of the preface of jude the obscure where hardy used these words to describe a novel in the preface to the first edition of jude the obscure hardy said about this novel that for a novel addressed by a man to men and women of full age which attempts to deal unaffectedly with the fret and fever derision and disaster that may press in the wake of the strongest passion known to humanity to tell without a mincing of words of a deadly war waged between flesh and spirit and to the point the tragedy of unfulfilled aims i am not aware that there is anything in the handling of which to which exception can be taken so in these words hardly seems to be defending his delineation of the sensitive issue in the novel jude the obscure so as he mentions clearly that that there is a conflict between flesh and spirit in this novel the sensitive issue being that the cousins jude and sue bridehead they remarried out of their own respective marriages and not only this they had their children as well with this marriage so it was adultery and extramarital relationship as well and that was against the conventional norms of the victorian society because of which this novel was severely criticized so the novel is about the inevitable frustration of human condition however this novel was criticized for dealing explicitly with the issues like divorce and adultery the novel was originally published in abridged and bodlerized form so abridged means shortened and bodlerized means removing the sensitive or vulgar passages vulgar extracts so it was expurgated edition and this was published in harper's new monthly magazine in 1894 to 95 so it was published in serialized form and then in 1895 it was published in its own edition hardy describes it a deadly war waged between flesh and spirit as i've told you earlier a deadly war waged between flesh and spirit so it also deals with the platonic love or platonic marriages so bride head was the kind of lady who believed in marriages but she did not believe in the sexual relationship in marriages she believed in platonic affection when the novel was published in its full fledged form so it created an uproar and provocative views and paul mol gazette criticized it severely as dirt drivel and damnation so it was criticized as dirt drivel and damnation by paul mol gazette even one of the friends of thomas hardy edmund goss said about the novel that it was grimy and indecent in the preface of 1912 hardy said that it was burnt by a bishop probably in his despair 
at not being able to burn me so the people were so much frustrated and angry at the publication of this novel that some of them they burned the copies of this novel and hardy was so much and so much disturbed by its hostile criticism that he left novel writing altogether the name of eldest child of jude and his former wife arabella his name was old father time this fact is important as to what was the name of the eldest child of jude who was from his former wife arabella so he was old farmer time and he hanged all the other children his step brother and sisters after hanging all the children his siblings his step siblings he said that done because we are too many so after saying these words he hanged himself even so he defended why he did it why he hanged all his siblings he said that it was done because we are too many and the spelling of many was m e n n y not m a n y the atmosphere was so much somber throughout the novel that the character jude he died wretchedly at the age of 30 his last words were wherefore is light given to him that is in misery and the life unto the bitter in soul so these were his last words wherefore is light given to him that is in misery and the life unto the bitter in soul next question thomas hardy wrote the novel desperate remedies on the advice of his john ruskin thomas carlyle a w ben or george meredith the correct answer is it was george meredith whose advice he followed in writing this novel desperate remedies george meredith was the same person who advised thomas hardy not to publish his first written novel the poor man and the lady george meredith advised him that this novel was too severe for the political conventions so he could receive some hostile responses so it was better for him not to publish it and consequently the manuscript of the novel was also lost perhaps hardy himself destroyed them the novel was published in 1871 anonymously and it is the novel of sensation it was published by tinsley brothers critics described this novel as quasi gothic for its sensational theme next question the title of hardy's under the greenwood tree is derived from shakespeare wordsworth chaucer or spencer the correct answer is it was from the phrase is taken from the song of as you like it under the greenwood tree it was brought out in 1872 it is the lightest and most appealing of his novels and it started the wessex novel series the first novel of wessex novel series for its idyllic scenery or idyllic setting the subtitle of this novel is a rural painting of the dutch school this novel was originally intended to be titled as the melstock choir because the story is of displaced musicians which reflects hardy's own experience at the church at stinsford college of thomas hardy the questions i have dealt with are some of the most important questions and they are expected questions as well besides the points and explanatory notes i have given in this video are quite helpful for your preparation of tgt pgt ntnet and other university entrance examinations so stay tuned for more of such videos like this video